Hey guys, it's Evan, and welcome to another episode of Gunpla TV. This time we are looking at an oldie but a goodie. This is the RX78 GPO1 FB Master Grade Kit from, of course, the OVA 0083 Stardust Memory. Personally, I think it's one of the best series to come out of Gundam. Uh, it's one of my favorites, and uh, I already did the old HG kit of this Gundam, and uh, I was taking a look back at the, some of the old kits that we have in stock, so I decided to review this one. Another interesting thing of note is this kit is from 1997. That's incredible to think about. For our USA viewers, for example, uh, Pokemon hadn't even come to the USA yet at this point. But yeah, this is the 12th Master Grade kit ever released. And interestingly enough, this is one of the oldest kits that hasn't had a 2.0 version or a remake, uh, ex if you exclude colors. So basically you've had your uh, ARC-78 has had multiple remakes, you've had your Zaku-2, the Zeta Gundam, but not the GP-01 or GP-01 FB. So how does a kit this old stack up? Is it really still worth buying? That's what we're going to find out today. So let's start off with what you get in the box. You have 16 runners. Uh, one of these runners is polycaps. You also get a very small sheet of stickers this time. The stickers are for the eyes, these two red lines on the kneecaps, and one for this little V crest that is on the chest. You also get two sheets of decals. Some of these are those drive transfer decals that you kind of rub on, and there's also a couple that are just these uh, clear small stickers. You actually get quite a few of these, so I'm pretty impressed by that. In addition, you get a nice manual in color and black and white, and mostly Japanese here. It's got some nice color pictures in the inside, as well as some nice black and white illustrations that show the mechanical design. I think these are really, really cool. Also in Japanese, it has some uh, explanations about some of the mechanics as well. Another thing to note is since this is such an older kit, the way that they have the layout for how to build it is a little bit different. There's these sections where you kind of build parts of the leg or the arm or whatever, and then afterwards you take these pre-built parts and assemble them back together to make the leg or the arm. Uh, it's a little confusing at first. I can see why they kind of change this later on, but once you're used to it, uh, it's, it's easy to follow. Fully assembled, you have your RX-78 GP-01 FB, the shield, six sets of hands. You have two fists, two open palms, and two normal uh, master grade type of hands where the thumb has articulation as well as the index finger and the four fingers that are attached together. Some additional pieces here for the backpack when you take the backpack off for the core fighter. Uh, these are the landing gears. You also get two sets of front thrusters for the chest as well as an open and closed version of the chest pieces. You also get two beam sabers. And uh, another th interesting thing about this kit is there is an additional V-fin here that's all one solid piece, I guess if you wanted to paint it for some reason. There's also these little extra pieces that don't go to anything, but you can use them if you wanna add a little bit more extra detail to your kit. This would require some cement, but it looks like you have these little handles that you could add to make it look like there's a, a ladder or something to climb on to your Gundam, and I'm not entirely sure what these other little pieces are, but uh, they're there if you want them. I'm surprised that this isn't more of a thing anymore. I guess Bandai kind of just decided snap fit is what people prefer instead of little extra customizations like this. Personally, I think it's cool. I don't think I'd use them, but it's nice to have them. You also have your beam rifle, and this comes with one E-pack attached to the rifle, and there's two that can attach to the shield. Okay, now let's take a look at the articulation. So first on the head here, a lot of these kits nowadays have two joints, one inside the head and one in the chest, but this one has just the one joint inside the head, but you can move it down this much and up, as well as a little bit side to side and 360 degrees. And this antenna here is stationary. On the arms here, you have this shoulder piece that's on its own joint, as well as these thrusters here that can actually come out if you open up this section and pull this out. There's another flap here that's on two joints, so you can lift it up or down. And normally, even on high grades these days, there's a joint here on the shoulder so that you can move the shoulder backwards and forwards. But on here, there is no such thing. This is actually just one large slab of plastic that's completely stationary. So none of that up and down or backwards and forwards motion on the shoulder. So just like that. But the arm does have a good amount of motion here. 
It does not move up as much as you would hope though. The elbow here is double jointed though, so that's nice. You get a lot of movement here up to the shoulder. And there's also some movement here on the wrist as well. As well as on this particular hand, you have the thumb and index finger as well as these four fingers that are one joint. This can also be removed and other hands can be attached. And this part on the chest here can fold up to display the core lander, as well as these doors here open up. At the waist here, you do get a little bit of motion, barely noticeable backwards and forwards. It is on its own joint though, and it can pivot side to side just a little bit. Skirt armor on the side can move up and down, and a little bit backwards and forwards. Skirt armor in the front as well. And the back armor is also movable. The legs have a good amount of motion forwards and backwards, as well as a double joint on the knee. This part of the knee can also move up and down as well. On the legs, you have these thrusters in the back that move on their own joint, another front piece of armor, and this part moves as well. And you can see the pistons and some other details on si inside as well. And on the leg, you have a heel that's on its own separate joint, as well as the toes. And uh, if you're not a big fan of these huge clown shoes, you can remove them to display the normal GP01 feet. On the back here, you have the backpack. These thrusters are on their own joints, as well as these ones. And the thrusters here also move up and down, as well as left and right however you want to position them. This backpack could also fold up and down and is removable. And there's also these beam sabers that are, can move up and down as well. In addition, you can remove the core fighter by removing the Gundam here. And here it is. Take that out. And here you can fold out the core fighter this is the back of the Gundam this can just fold up and these fold down and these also fold down as well and then the backpack also can fold up these wings and this attaches to the back from here you can attach the landing gears as well as on these side pieces here where this little polycap peg is like so so see on the beam ruffle here you do have a e-pack that is removable it is kind of a pain to get off though uh, you have a handle here that swivels back and forth as well as this scope that can move backwards and forwards as well and on the shield here you also have more e-packs as well as a handle that can fold down and swivel and this is where you attach it to the arm. And on top of that, you also have a fold in and out motion here. So it's on a double jointed arm inside here. So what you can do is just fold it down or pull it out and up and snap into place for the full size shield. So the question is, how well does this Gundam hold up? Well, clearly there are better master grades now. This thing is relatively ancient, but after building, I gotta say, I'm way more impressed than I was expecting. The mold on this is still really, really good. Just putting this on the shelf, it looks very nice. Granted, that is if you are willing to do at least just a little bit of effort. For example, on my kit, I didn't paint it or anything, but I did a lot of panel lining, usually more panel lining than I do for reviews because uh, I like to leave it so that the kit looks more or less how it looks out of the box. But here I did as much panel lining as I possibly could, as well as I do it a flat coat uh, after doing the decals. So I did the decals, flat coat, and a lot of panel lining, and that helped it a lot, I think. Uh, so it looks a lot nicer if you do put a little extra effort into it other than just snapping it together. Another thing I did is for at least the main camera on the Gundam, since 
you only have a clear pierce here and there's no color. I took a little leftover piece of green foil from an old HG kit and I kind of just put it in there before putting the clear piece in so at least it has a little bit of color and I think that kind of helped give it a nice look. I will say though that there are some pieces here that have no color separation which is a bummer but again given the age I'm not too surprised. For example, on the shoulders here, there are these pieces on the uh, pauldrons that should be gray. Again, no stickers at, at the very least for the cameras. Oh, and the thrusters should also have some gray pieces here as well, but it's just one big slab of white plastic here. Oh, and lastly, the thrusters should have some red on the inside that is just not there. It's just one big piece of gray plastic. But if you like to paint your kits, uh, this should be a non-issue. Even if you're not a big fan of painting your kits, it's only a few spots here and there you really need to touch up if uh, you want it to look really nice. Uh, I especially suggest the, the shoulders and the backpack thrusters, as well as some red on the inside of the jets. That's something I really want to do. Other than that, if you have a Gundam marker and some flat coat, that's really all you need to make it look pretty good. The other thing too is the articulation. It's not quite as good as you would hope, especially the legs. There's not a whole lot of motion in the legs that you can have it in different poses. Uh, the arms, you don't have that joint in the shoulder, so you can't really make as many dynamic poses as you would expect. But if you're just gonna have it standing there or if you're gonna have it in a kind of like a flight position or something like that, it still looks really, really good. Oh, another thing is the master grade hands. Uh, I know even with the Wing Zero, the 2004 one that I did, it was still an issue, but it just does not hold the weapon very well. The beam sabers are okay, but the beam rifle kind of just flops around in his hand and it doesn't hold it very well. So do I recommend this kit? Uh, if you like the way it looks, absolutely. If you're looking for something that uh, just snapped together and looks great, right out of the box, then maybe not. If you're looking for something like that, again, I would go with the real grade version of the GP01. But if you're looking for a 1-100 scale GP01 FB, this is all you have right now. But it still looks really, really good. So if you don't mind a little bit of effort required in your kits, definitely check it out. And here's hoping that someday Bandai makes a 2.0 of this kit. I would love to see that. It's one of my favorite Gundams and one of my favorite series, so I think it is due. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Gunpla TV, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.